My name is Teresa. I'm doing a PhD in applied mathematics and I work in inverse problems for computational imaging. If I lost you here, congratulations. <laughs> You're not alone. And I will tell you a few stories um, how people usually react to when I tell them what I just told you. The last time at my family dinner, I really love my family for being, well, trying so hard to understand me. <laughs> but this usually goes this way. I, I start with, I work with inverse problems. And then all of a sudden, my mom realizes something. There is still cake in the kitchen. <laughs> and the evening ends with, well, everyone having cake, but still no clue what I'm working on. Well, and there was this other time where I'm sitting at my dentist, quite, quite sweaty and anxious because I'm waiting for my treatment. And then this dentist remembers, oh, you're a mathematician, right? I have never understood why people do research on images because, you know, this machine can, take, can do a 3D model of your teeth in a minute. And I mean, why, why do people do math anyway if everything's <laughs> working already, you know? <laughs> So by now you will have realized that being a mathematician is hard and getting people to understand what you're doing is even harder because they stop listening in the first minute. <laughs> yeah, and so I decided to give it a bit more effort and tell you a story about how I got hooked into the research of inverse problems. And there is this very fascinating um, research team at MIT in America that were actually able to figure out what people speak in a room by looking at a cute little house plant. Yeah. So um, basically, how does, um, well, you figure yourself sitting in a living room, right, with a friend, maybe talking about some intimate things. You, know, you never know what's going to be talking, about, what you're going to talk about in the living room. Plant is over there, quietly watching you, basically. <laughs> And there is this person out at the window that basically looks at your plant and can know what you speak. <laughs> so if you don't feel like entering the matrix yet, I don't know what. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, but to, to ease a bit the suspicion here, I will tell you how this works, basically. Because I, if I talk, I send out sound waves into the room. And this is going to excite the leaves. <laughs> the leaves of the plant. Obviously not that hard because otherwise we could see that. We cannot actually see the plant vibrating right now. But you could take a video of this plant and make this visible and then compute basically from well analyzing the video what has been said in the room. Yeah. Reality is a weird thing, right? <laughs> So yeah, that's really the beauty about inverse problems because you can make things visible that you would not be able to see otherwise. And this just by taking some measurements of reality. Um, and yeah, just um, to make this a bit more tangible because we can't actually use this algorithm right now. <laughs> I will ask a person in the first row um, a question in order to figure out what this person had for lunch. So, um, what's your name? Connor. Sorry, say again. Connor. Connor. Oh, okay, so this is Connor. <laughs> <laughs> and by knowing Connor's name, I could guess that he had pizza for lunch. No? <laughs> well, damn. What a shame. Well, this measurement hasn't been quite good, actually. <laughs> But I could take you to a hospital, put you in an MR, MR scanner and see what your intestines contain, right? I could take an image and I could see, well, I could see that you had rice for lunch, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I would like to play a game with you. I need three volunteers to help me figure out, solve this inverse problem, what is in the bag. 
but before I actually get to it, to choose the volunteers and like that, you actually take some sensory measurements by, you know, putting your arm in here. Um, um, I tell you about something that's really important in my research, namely uncertainty quantification, which means that I will take some sample answers and I will figure out whether, well, whether when the sample answers agree pretty much, then I know that my, rea my view of reality is quite good. They don't agree, however. I'm screwed, that's bad. Like, I have no idea. <laughs> and this is quite important to know, you will see. So, um, well, who is gonna, who's gonna help me with figuring out what's in there? All right, please. You're not supposed to take it out. <laughs> Any guesses? Is it, is it a neck pillow? All right, so we got one, one measurement, a neck pillow. All right. I mean, this was a pretty intense sensory. Um, all right. There you go. <laughs> well, actually, maybe it's just a plastic bag, right? <laughs> you know, inverse problems are hard to solve, really. <laughs> Stuffed animal pillow. Okay, so I got a neck a neck pillow and a stuffed animal pillow. Any more volunteers to try? Oh, over there. <laughs> yeah, it is a bit gross to, to grab something we don't know about in a plastic bag, right? <laughs> Okay, okay, so well, my answer the quantification method might not be too bad. I mean, we don't really know the answer yet, but like there's two neck pillows and a stuffed animal. Let's, well, actually, there's a catch to it. Do you really want me to, to pull it out? Are you sure about this? Because it's going to have consequences. Okay, okay. Your choice. All right, so, so what, what is this? What is this? Is this a neck pillow? <laughs> well, it might be. Could also be a horse or both. We don't quite know. Or is it the national animal of Scotland? <laughs> Didn't you know that unicorns are national animal of Scotland? No? All right, so we figured out that solving inverse problems are hard and uncertainty quantification is important because otherwise we don't really know what, 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 what we are pulling out of the bag. <laughs> and let me tell you something. Pulling this thing out of the bag is sort of similar to pulling Connor's intestines out of his stomach <laughs> in order to figure out that he had rice for lunch. So I committed an inverse crime, and literally, you need to call the police now. <laughs> and, well, lock me in. Bye. <laughs>